Welcome to the Metasploit Sprint demo meeting for uh, April 18th, 2017. Yeah, uh, we've, we've got a lot, a lot of cool stuff that has happened in the last two weeks. And so without further ado, uh, we'll hop in. So we've got, um, here's a, you know, showing the open pull requests over time. Um, you know, we had a little little surge there in March, but we're going to be keeping it level um, you know, as we've been going in, into April here. So that's great. Uh, many thanks to folks who've been reviewing and, and helping uh, land and uh, comment and tweak up PRs. It's good stuff. Uh, here's a, a, a visual of the pull request uh, per quarter by date, and so you can kind of see some activity going on there. Yeah, typically our, our, our current quarter is a little low because uh, it's not finished yet, but um, it's uh, it like we're still on track right now to basically top last quarter. So that'll be really nice this week. Be towards the end. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Brent. Yeah. Uh, here's a slide. It might be a little hard to read, but uh, you should be able to view it in the uh, slide deck or in the video later and, and see it well enough. The, the top committers uh, over the last month. Um, Woo! Yeah, there's a lot of. That Brent guy, he sure does commit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Including reverting some stuff, too. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, so a lot of good stuff. A big shout out to everybody on that list. Big thanks. Um, so, let's see here. Um, here's some things that landed, um, and there's more after this too. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, I'm not going to read. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and read everything on the slide, uh, but we've had some improvements from Meterpreter, like uh, improved key logging, some in-app screenshot capability. Uh, we've updated the Kiwi extension uh, to MimiCat's version 2.1.1. Um, uh, we have got a new uh, command injection exploit for a particular version of Huawei routers. Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, in fact, that's kind of an interesting one because I believe it actually isn't patched yet. Um, it's, uh, it affects at least one U uh, Egyptian ISP. If you that's right. Yeah. Um, and the, the router are actually just still sitting there vulnerable. We managed to reach out to try to get some response from the uh, actual you know, guys who distribute the modems, but I don't know if we've heard anything back yet. Um, oh, something I wanted to point out about the, the improved key logging, which is kind of interesting, is that um, we actually are using a, a newer API that doesn't drop keystrokes. Uh, previously, the interpreter would just poll which meant that if people type passwords really fast, you wouldn't catch them. Um, now it's, we're fully compliant with um, uh, uh, password managers where they do a real quick type or even like a UV key or something like that. Right. Um, it lets you catch them all. It even logs which application you type into so you can sort of get the context of what what was actually typed where. So it's, it's a pretty neat feature of the first try now. Yeah, that's great. Uh, speaking of interpreter, we have this new Arch Migrate module. Uh, so if you're on an X64 Windows system, and you're running a x86 interpreter, you can migrate to an x64 interpreter. That's kind of cool. Um, keeping it real, uh, a big Indian small took this up with another uh, mainframe uh, uh, privilege escalation uh, for ZOS. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Yeah, in fact, after I landed his PR, um, he reached out to me on Twitter and he wants to help get interpreter running on native ZOS as well. <laughs> so um, he's going to start working on that pretty soon. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Oh. Very cool. We've also added uh, the, the ability to provision EC2 instances in AWS, and, and you can even set up a, one of the new Metasploit aggregator uh, via script um, on those. Um, and then there's a new AUX module that will allow you to download configuration off a Cambium ECMP device via SNMP. And we had some Cambium stuff last Yeah, uh, I think we had about six, six new Cambium modules last week. Yeah. Um, and so this time we have even more. That thing is just a, a pile of failure. <laughs> um, so if you've got Cambium um, ECMP devices, which are basically um, big wireless antennas for point-to-point -point connections, um, get those things patched or segmented, for sure. So yeah. I have two of them on my car. <laughs> All right, well, uh, there you go. <laughs> Things isolated. Well, okay. come up to your, uh, I also have a UI HG 532M router. Oh, <laughs> oh good. Uh, you, you can just donate it to our uh, <coughs> lab. To the lab. But yeah. there, we, we did some research. There's actually a lot more vulnerabilities than the ones that we, we have for this module. So um, yeah. probably a, a good basket of worms to uh, <laughs> be compress or something. It's a basket of worms. I like that. Basket. Yeah. That's kind of what it feels like sometimes. Um, oh my gosh, another page of things that landed. Hey, this was, you had two last week. I think. Okay. Yeah, last time, sorry. Uh, yeah, so we also have, you know, some uh, post module uh, for gathering credentials uh, out of uh, IRC. Is that how you say that? I'm not familiar with the app. I've never used it. Oh, yeah, IRC, uh, that sounds about right. In fact, yeah. that's from... Um, that's from Claudio, um, a longtime contributor. He actually just came back from a, a couple year hiatus and just suddenly appeared. And uh, he's actually working on our weekly update blog. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. So, uh, so kind of nice work from him. Yeah, that's very cool. 
Um, some more uh, updated metal to, uh, on OSX to support some uh, external API clipboard methods. Um, we fixed up a HTTP trace output when using when the server's responding with chunks encoding. Really good stuff for debugging. I think Wave originally wrote that module, and then uh, then uh, uh, Firefart actually fixed it up, so it worked with, with chunking. So uh, it's very good for debugging client side um, HTTP exploits. Right on. Yeah. Um, some other good stuff. Uh, Good one. Uh, relevant. In, you try to be a little more relevant in, in the stack trace when a reflected DLL injection won't work because it just doesn't have the RDI stub that needs to be present. A um, few bug fixes in there too. So you know, good stuff. We can move things forward. Um, oh, okay. Last page of things I landed. Uh, sorry. Pages? Three pages. Three and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Then we'll go on to things that are in the queue. But there's a short, shorter list. So we've uh, well one nice uh, fix up uh, courtesy of uh, Ross uh, on the, uh, the platform delivery team is to preserve customer added certs um, across pro upgrades that have been kind of a sticky one for a while. Um, I, I don't know if it's landed yet, but the use of Ruby SMB with Pro is it landed this morning yay. on the final bit. So that means we'll be able to do full SMB <coughs> one and SMB two scanning uh, within Metasploit Pro now, which we, awesome. we we punted last release, but we, it's it's fully working now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Awesome, and some other various uh, tweaks and improvements, bug fixes, good stuff. Uh, things in the works. Uh, we've got some RC exploit modules coming coming down the line, um, actively being worked on right now. And, uh, some some hotness in here, um, including uh, Microsoft uh, IIS, uh, this storage path from URL uh, exploit or vulnerability, I should say, uh, an Office OLE uh, link object uh, vulnerability. Um, I think Nick Sock's been working on that one. Maybe? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and so, so a couple of things to kind of note here: the IES 6.0 exploit was was one of the things that was also leaked as part of the uh, the Shadow Broker stuff mm -hmm. last Friday. Um, Microsoft had patched it uh, previously, but they're actually not going to patch Windows 2003. So that means anyone who's still running IES on Windows 2003 is still totally vulnerable for that one. And will remain vulnerable. Right. And um, and uh, kind of an interesting thing is we're actually in the process of reverse engineering a bit of that because. The module's based on a proof of concept that was sort of dumped on the internet without really any explanation. Um, so we've been basically trying to make sure that it's well documented so we don't end up injecting random shell code into people's computers as well. Yeah. That's, that would be. I is fixed on Windows 2003. <laughs> That's 2003. right. 2003. There's a part of the number still out there. I believe it probably is, which is scary. Yeah. <laughs> scary. Yeah. And the OLO link object one is also interesting in that you can get remote code execution. Um, Without having any macros enabled, and um, that was only Fantastic. patched about 30 days ago, so um, so still pretty fresh and uh, pretty easy to exploit. Right on. And we had a, a, a privilege manager uh, RC exploit as well, mm -hmm. um, and a, a credentials gathering post module for JBoss services. So good stuff in the works. And on that note, uh, some things have been happening in Metasploitable 3 lately. Um, continue to add goodness to that for, for you know people's you know consumer satisfaction, I guess, um, including uh, using Apache's Web DAV for exploitation. Uh, also enabled Samba mounting right way, and uh, mm -hmm. now there's a directory on Linux that you can mount via Samba to the Windows VM. Um, also added a new PHP page. It has uh, it's vulnerable to SQL injection. Ha added a Unreal RCD service, so Linux mm -hmm. VM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a vulnerable one that people can take advantage of. And I added a custom app that has a deserialization due to a compromised secret vuln, which I didn't fully grok. Can you talk a little bit about that one? Which one? The mm -hmm. last one, the custom app with the deserialization due to a uh, compromised secret. That's theory. for uh, mimicking uh, uh, GitHub uh, Enterprise's uh, default uh, secret session, you know, session data. Uh, what happens is what you the uh, there's a default secret uh, to sign the cookie and people can actually figure out how to recreate that hash and then after the uh, uh, if the server accepts the, accepts the cookie it'll actually deserialize your data and if you can make the server deserialize your uh, Ruby object you can get code execution. Nice. So as I understand it, a lot of Metasploitable 3, the work that you guys are working on, is not just canned apps that you just throw a module at, but you actually have to do some reverse engineering and you have to do some code uh, analysis to actually figure out where the bones are, right? Right. The idea of Metasploitable 3 is allowing everybody with different skills level to kind of 
have fun. Like if you're if you're a novice, you can just throw modules and get a shell. If you're a reverse engineer, you can actually uh, find a zero day and then kind of write an exploit for it. You know, for different you know audiences. So everybody, it's fun. It's fun for everybody. Yeah, and now it's not like <laughs> multiple VMs at the same time, right? They actually talk to each other. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Good for ages one to one hundred. Um, and you've got there's a new one too that you're gonna show us yeah. later in the demo. I'm gonna right? show I'm gonna show a, a new ball uh, for Mass Yeah. So stay tuned. Don't leave yet. All right, it's time to demo. Um, Brent, would you look? You said you had some stuff you'd like to show. You want a second? Or? I think I'm going to pass the mic to, uh, to Wade if he's ready. Right. Oh, sure. All right, so my demo is about a specific vulnerability on Mass Wiggle 3, specifically the Linux one. Um, this one is called, uh, this vulnerability is called Cross Origin. Uh, um, and here it is. Uh, so, Mass. So Mouseboid Mouse Wiggle 3 have, is a it's a virtual net, it's a network that has a bunch of uh, vulnerable machines. Uh, in this case, we have Windows and Linux. The Windows one is already out. Uh, the Linux one is still being built. And when they're both up, they can talk to each other. You can exploit one machine and then get to another. That's the idea. Um, the one that's being built, uh, the Linux version, uh, this one we're focusing more on uh, zero days instead of publicly known vulnerabilities because that's kind of what you actually see in the real world. You tend to see more more uh, custom applications on a Linux machine. In this case, we have the Symmetra default secret deserialization, which is the one that uh, Pierre just talked about, and then uh, SQL injection that James James did, and then another one, the, the, the recent one, is the cross origin bypass. Um, yeah. So this type of vulnerability is kind of unique, it's, but it's becoming more common because uh, enterprise applications are, they tend to be uh, microservices. Um, and this type of vulnerability is more unique to that type of architecture instead of the monolithic architecture. Um, I was kind of inspired to do this because uh, I had the opportunity to learn about how the, the phishing uh, fast works from Lily. And then we we're kind of talking about uh, the front end and back end, this, the architecture and stuff. And then and then we we're kind of hitting this problem. And then, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this this, there's a, this, this could be a problem for, for this type of design. So I decided to kind of talk about it a little bit and use this as an example in Mass Level 3. Um, so, um, Cross, cross origin is kind of difficult to explain because in order to exploit it, it actually requires multiple volumes. You need to chain, chain multiple volumes to get code execution. Um, but the idea of cross origin is uh, imagine you have two servers, uh, website A, you have website A, you have website B. Uh, think of the website B as your front end as a micro, in the microservice architecture, and then website A is your back end. Uh, website A, say it makes a banana. Uh, that's the back end. And then website B, there's uh, the, the UI part, it's the HTML, the JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then you have a browser, the visitor. Uh, what happens is um, normally the visitor goes to the front end. The front end is serving uh, this JavaScript that basically tells the uh, the visitor to go to website A to 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 call the REST API. Um, the visitor will receive the the JavaScript, parse it, render it, and then it'll actually make that request to website A. And this and what happens with doing this process? The visitor calls website A and then see the origin. That's actually a header in an HTTP uh, uh, request. Uh, the browser will identify itself, will say, I, I come from this website, website B. And then um, if the uh, service says uh, only website C is allowed to access me, then Firefox, uh, the visitor gets an error. Uh, if you go to developers tool, that's, that's the type of error that you will see. And in this case, no banana for this visitor. Um, however, if the server says, uh, only website B is allowed, which it did come from website B, then it works. It yeah, there you go. 
Uh, and, <coughs> yeah. Um, the Menace Wave 3 Vong is based on this design. Uh, think of, uh, we, so we have two servers. Uh, one is the chat room. Uh, one of them is a local host. Uh, only uh, uh, the, the bot called Papa Smurf can access. Uh, so in order for me to exploit the vulnerable service functions.js, I have to trick the uh, the the robot the bot into executing, passing my input to the back end and, and, and executing uh, some malicious stuff. So my attack plan is first off, I'm gonna set up an executable, uh, a interpreter, and I'm gonna host that on my web server. Uh, and then I'm going to create a handler. That way, when I trick the bot into downloading and executing, uh, I have a place uh, for the, uh, the server to download and ex execute my interpreter. And I have a demo for that. So in this case, I'm in a chat room. Uh, first off, you can actually talk to the bot. The bot, is, it pretends to be a real person. So I can, you can like talk to the bot, hi, and then the bot will actually try to social engineer as well. It'll try every once in a while to come up with some random one and say, hey, click on this and see if you, if you fall for it. Um, so in this case, the idea is the, the attacker has to figure out how to exploit a bot. And the bot basically gives you a hint. Um, if you ask for help, the bot will give you a hint. So the bot says, I know everyone in the system. So you can say, do you know this guy? And the bot says, oh, yeah, totally, and gives you some kind of proof. So based on this, I know that the server is uh, executing some kind of command and returning the system output to me. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to set up the attack stream, which will trick the bot into downloading and executing my stuff. And then and I have to escape the stream because there are, this is HTTP based. Um, Copy that, um, and this shows that I have the web server ready to to uh, for the server to download my payload, and I have a handler going. Uh, so if I trick the bot, if you're doing that, you know this guy and injecting screen uh, uh, command into it, and then I end up getting a uh, a session, and that's how you exploit a cross origin type of attack. Uh, basically, you need to, there's multiple bones in it, you <coughs> three bones at least you can actually, uh, the bot is executing your data. It could be JavaScript or whatever. In this case, just passing in malicious input. Uh, the, uh, the vulnerable service allows the bot to access, which is, uh, well, the vulnerable service is listening on local host and assumes that nobody can access. It's kind of an air gas system, except you kind of assume it's always safe. And then there's command uh, injection. Uh, one real world example is, uh, <coughs> This um, it was found uh, on Google pro 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 Google Project Zero. Basically, it's a trend micro volume. That's actually uh, actually it's similar to the the, the design in Mass Wable Three. Basically, it's a password manager. The front end is you know you get a password and stuff, and the back end is where the password is stored. Um, so basically, what the attacker does is just go to this link. In this case, it's the uh, something, something, open your default browser, and then URL, and then uh, some, some malicious, you know, uh, executable. And that, it, that input ends up being passed through a shell, shell execute. And then, and then you can trick the, uh, you can trick the, uh, the user into executing this JavaScript and end up executing um, that. And yeah. Well, that's gotta be pretty, big in this modern world of microservices, right? Yes, I mean, this you, be, you will probably tend to see that. See yeah, yeah. And for bananas. Yeah, not for <laughs> bananas in this case, yeah. That's pretty badass. This is, yeah, this is, just to reiterate, this was a custom app that you wrote that allows, so, so it's not something public that people can go look up no, on the web. Yeah, the idea is until people start posting about uh, the player <laughs> the, uh, has to find this vault and figure out how to write a module for it. And it's kind of, it's, it's not your typical <coughs> overflow or SQL injection. You know, it's not, you have to, like, no, no, normally people don't talk to a bot to exploit it. You know, that's kind of, you know. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Wei. Thank you. All right.
Deb, you want to yeah. go next, man? Cool. Deb's going to show us some of the goodness he's been adding to uh, Pro lately. Um, should... And this is some stock some improvements to bone validation, right? Yeah, just uh, visualizing your uh, bones and what modules are associated them, it, with them in general. So uh, just to, to start, typically, um, currently in Pro, so this is, I've done like a uh, Nexpos import, right? And uh, this is a small scale example. I have like one, I mean like four hosts in here, right? You know, you might have like hundreds, but um, here, um, I have all these vulnerabilities and uh, to see what modules are associated with the vulnerabilities, you have to iteratively, you know, go to each vulnerability and see the related modules, right? So uh, to be able to easily see all your modules, we added a new table here. Um, So you have a list of um, modules that are related to vulnerabilities and uh, you can see which hosts they are applicable to. You can search across them. Um, all these columns work. Um, but what we want, so right now in this list are exploit modules that have been matched to vulns, but what we would like to see in this list are um, all of the modules across all of the hosts. So like some of these modules are not exploit modules, and I'm just working through some of the relational database issues and magic in Pro to um, make, make these actually show up in there. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's essentially it. Nice. So what, what did we change in the UI at the moment? We added a new table, <laughs> which is oh, so. It's, so it's it's just the whole table. Yeah, yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole tab. Is yeah. So like, you can go into you know a vulnerability, and see the related modules to it, but now we're aggregating them all at the workspace level. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that'll make uh, searching a lot easier. Yeah. You don't need to find it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the lighter. Mm -hmm. nice. It's good to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a banana. It's, it's a banana. banana. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. What modules do you write about the new tab? Modules takes you to. Um, Modules, all the modules. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the entire module. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it'll, it'll take you to the entire module, like thousands of modules. modules. Like, it lets so it'll let you search for so individual modules. modules. And it's going to be the same as the top. That's a, yeah. yeah, it's the same as the top modules. Yeah. I think at one point it won't be loadable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like your data. Cool. Thanks, Deb. Brent, you know, you, I was actually uh, curious. I was actually asking the group, uh, would, would anyone be interested in seeing some of these shatter broker module yeah. exploits running in practice? Um, I just want to make sure that was okay from a demo point of view. Um, actually, uh, I want to pass the mic um, to, to Will. Are, are you ready, Will? Are you on the phone? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Boo. Uh, well, Hi. I'm just changing this username so it's a little bit less. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so, anyways, a little bit of background. Um, there's basically been kind of a series of, of um, um, uh, exploits that have been sort of uh, publicly released by a group called Shadow Brokers. That originally they were trying to sell them on the internet as basically a that they they found and uh, they weren't able to find any buyers or at least they, if they did they didn't talk about who they were but eventually um, and they've been releasing passwords to some of their encrypted files that they they had um, shared with the internet 
And uh, this last Friday, they released a whole bunch of um, um, uh, uh, some new uh, files containing uh, basically a lot of new Windows exploits, some that have been patched very recently, as, as far as 30 days ago, and a whole new exploit framework as well, including uh, in general uh, uh, remote access tool, kind of like the interpreter. Um, so uh, Will's going to show a little bit about how those tools work and um, a little bit of how you can actually use them with the interpreter. Nice. Hi. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah cool. Please. I'm actually dialed in and uh, not using the computer audio. But um, let me go over the dump real quick. Uh, yeah, obviously, if you have clearance or don't want to see, then silently opt out. But uh, here's a list of um, the Windows dump that they did recently. Uh, Windows and Swift, and they also have Odd Job, which is a CNC payload builder thing. Um, man, my computer fan's spinning up hard here. Uh, so um, it's a lot of O days. Uh, a lot of O days, a lot of remote O days in Windows, uh, mostly SMB versions one through three. And um, it's quite a scary dump. And um, probably the most interesting, though, is uh, this one here. Eternal Blue, which uh, gets remote root on a bunch of different systems. It's not just Windows 7 SV1 is documented here, but it's part of this MS-17-010 um, uh, patch that Microsoft pushed out just about the same day. And um, they say they they didn't know about the dump or anything, but who, who knows if they were in contact with the NSA or not. Um, but uh, Fuzzbunch is the exploitation framework, which is actually a lot like Metasploit. And um, it has a GUI interface, which I haven't gotten working yet because I need Java and, and old enough Java and everything. Uh, this was actually designed for XP, Windows XP. And um, I found that you don't actually need it. You can actually run it all in Wine. And uh, Wine is uh, not an emulator, but it's, it's, um, it's a way, it's a compatibility layer to run Windows executables and DLLs and whatnot in uh, a Unix environment. So, what is this message? I, uh, I wonder what Metasploit is. Must be related to next. Todd, come on. Um, all right. So, <coughs> let me get started here. Okay. Change username. Can everyone see? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So here's a directory. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a bunch of Python, and um, the exploits are all ESCs with XML configs and um, a bunch of other metadata. But uh, reversing them will be tough. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'll talk to other people in the community. Um, the exploits are extremely well weaponized and you'd expect nothing less from uh, from this agency uh, they put lots and lots of hours into making these exploits reliable um, stealthy and uh, I mean it's not necessarily hard to reverse because it's not obfuscated or anything but it's a lot of code so uh, yeah you could actually see eternal blue is under specials um, so there's fuzzbunch.py. I think when Arch would be 32 line start. Cool. So I have a shell. Oops, username. A uh, shell as some um, like a command exe shell in wine. Uh, I tried doing this with plain wine and it didn't work so well because it was it was like doubling up on echoed characters. So um, it works in the command exe simulated uh, emulated thingy. Um, there, I installed Python here. Uh, uh oh. Oh, okay. Make sure this domain. Cool. 
So um, the difference between this and Metasploit is that it, it does a lot of prompting. It has like a wizard mode, um, which you can turn off, but uh, it's kind of nice if you don't know the framework real well, it'll prompt you for what you need. But I can't, I, don't, I haven't figured out how to scroll up here, but um, yeah, I just loaded the plugins and uh, showed, yeah, it's auto run list and everything. Um, we want to set our IP here. Let me make sure it didn't change. Oh, it did change. One, three, six. I should probably start Metasploitable 3 here. Just give me a sec. This goes pretty fast. So Metasploitable 3 is vulnerable right now to all the uh, all the yep. exploits. Yep, uh, right out of the box. Uh, while we're doing that, let's go over here. Start MSF console in one tab. Go over here. MSF Venom, um, so yeah, I'll show you in a second. I'll, I'll, I'll do it when, when we get there. Um, so there we have MSF running uh, here. Uh, login is Vagrant, Vagrant, Escalator. Uh, don't mind that. Actually, I can probably turn sound off. Nope. Okay, I'm 129 here, and I am 136 here. This used to be 179. So, uh, oops, yeah, go back to wine. Default target, one, nine, two, one, six, eight, 33, one, 29. Callback, so this is where the reverse shell will go. One, nine, two, one, six, eight, 33, one, 36. No redirection. Uh, logs, we'll just do C, because I don't have a D drive here. Project. Uh, cool. This is really all there is to it. So um, you can use. It does have tab completion. Here's Eternal Blue, which is that SMB uh, V1 exploit remote. Um, looks like it already has target. No, okay. Good. Um, prompt. Yes, we want to prompt. Network come out 50 is fine. Target IP 129, 445 for SMB. Verify, which is nice that it will actually validate that the target is correct for exploiting and it will validate after the fact to make sure the target was exploited. Yeah, verify backdoor, double pulse, there's a default plugin. Uh, three max exploit. Uh, groom allocation is an interesting. Um, it, it spends a lot of time cleaning up the heap after it's done, um, basically smashing it. Near as I can tell, it's, it's like a use after free. Um, target, uh, yeah. And we actually want FB to obtain, yeah, yeah. Don't run it yet. I want to show you something. It, it's a uh, show the target, show the targets up here. Um, uh, you can actually, um, here's a list of the actual targets. Uh, Windows 10 isn't in here. I think some people got it to work, but I'm not sure. Um, but these are known to work for sure. Windows you can work. see some, what? <laughs> Windows for Workgroups is in there. 3.1. Yeah, I know, right? 3.1. Um, notice uh, you'll see some of these. 3790 is the RDP port, if I recall correctly. So it does actually have a remote RDP O day in here, which is awesome. Awesome. Uh, anyway, go back to for 20 years. Maybe. Oh, my. Hmm. It's running. 
that may not that may actually be an invalid target right i would hope so <laughs> <coughs> so it's running right now You can see uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 Standard 7601 Service Pack 1. That was actually our target over here. If you, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I, it looks like I shut it down incorrectly. That's. Or what? Oh well. Um, let's, let's try again. Um, hmm. That's not good. Well, that's the first time that's happened. <laughs> uh, uh, come on. I don't know why it crashed. That's that's surprising, but um, it is possible considering it's it's uh, deep based memory corruption here that it, huh, it didn't work. But it didn't work first time. <laughs> we didn't we didn't slaughter enough chickens this morning, I guess. Uh, one, yeah, one short. It's, uh, short. Uh, one short. <laughs> There we go. All right, so it worked. Hey. Double Pulsar default plugin. But yeah, you can see it worked finally, and it didn't crash. Good. Um, for uh, for variable studies, yes. So um, this is that. Uh, this is this, the back door that that allows additional functionality. Um, you could say. Um, it is SMB. We didn't do RDP architecture. Uh, pretty sure we did x64, and you can run a DLL. So go back here to Windows x64 interpreter. First, TCP is fine. LOS 192.168.33.1. So that's this machine, my Mac. Um, format. Mix. Format DLL output interpreter. So it's a DLL version of the interpreter, the stager. Um, uh, 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 good. Uh, probably should. Oh, what am I doing? Um, I don't, don't mind. So we need to set up the handler. Come on, tab complete. It is running the handler. Got the payload. Payload over here. Um, um, I 
I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> um, we will copy this to wine, drive C. We'll go back here, say interpreter dot interpreter DLL. Uh, one is the right ordinal number. Uh, LSAS risky, so I'm going to migrate this. They're injecting the school service. Are we ready? Hope it works. Um, There you go. Right. Yeah. Very cool, Will. Yeah. That's awesome. 